Soon enough, we'll talk about Chelsea's current season, but let's have a short recap of what happened in the last one. Chelsea had one of their worst ever seasons in the last campaign, finishing 12th in the league with only 44 points, and astonishing 27 points off from the top 4. Rare again. Top 4, not from top of the league. The league winner Manchester City earned more than double points than Chelsea. Chelsea broke numerous records last season and all of them are in the worst possible ways. I tried my best. Exactly. Most expensive transfer window, 4 managers in a single season, lowest point for them in this century, lowest goal scored and many more like this. And all of this started with the change of their Russian owner Roman Abramovich due to the Russian-Ukraine war. Roman had to sell the club to Todd Bowley who is a fantastic businessman but not particularly a huge football guy like Roman was. So when he started to pull the strings of a club as huge as Chelsea, things went horribly wrong. Okay, so I made one bad decision. Now enough of last season, let's start what's going on now in Chelsea and how they should fix this and where can we expect to see them at the end of this season. When talking about Chelsea nowadays, people keep saying they have an incredibly talented squad and to be honest, that statement first needs to be fixed. The group of players they have at Chelsea had an incredibly high ceiling, but most of them are not yet an incredible player and to be honest, nowhere close. Still a long way to go. When you buy players when they are 18 to 21 years old, all the fascinating things they do in that time feels amazing considering, wow they are so young, if they can do this now, then just think what they can do in their prime. The problem is, when it comes to football, you can tell that for so many players in the world, and very few of them become the next Messi, Ronaldo, Mbappe, Modric, Terry, Vidic, Ronaldinho, KDB, Lewandowski, Drogba, Iniesta, Zidane, etc. And honestly, you don't need your players to be the next Messi, Ronaldo. Next Gundogan, Mane, Son, Casemiro, Mata are totally fine as they can deliver you titles. Problem is, Chelsea's current squad is full of players who have huge potential, they can be the next Vini or Mbappe, next Kante, next Drogba and what not. But the whole team is just full of players with huge promises, who have a ridiculously low number of football minutes in their legs and with a ridiculously huge price tag on their back. Most of these players are less than 22 years old and have played less than 50 league games in their life, and all in different teams and most in different leagues, under multiple different managers. Look at the number of senior league games played for Modric, Enzo, Caicedo, Jackson, Kearney, Colwell, Gusto, Maduike and Lavia, and almost all of them are supposed to be starters at Chelsea. Can you imagine how absurd is that? Absurd. I admire the whole idea of building a team with young guns and huge potential, but this is certainly not the way to do it. Most young players flourish when the sole responsibilities to produce for the team are not on them when there are other seasoned performers in the team and whatever you will do will add to them. When your team already has multiple leading figures, already has a coach who has been there for 2-3 good years and established a well-built system, that's the place young players flourish. But none of these are true for Chelsea unfortunately. Their new coach Pochettino is a fantastic one but he joined just in July. Most of these players only joined Chelsea last season and went through horror after horror under 2-3 different managers. I don't know how on earth so much is expected from this Chelsea side both by their fans and the critics out there. I understand why though, because Todd Boyle spent almost a billion dollars since his takeover and that's an unbelievable sum of money. Would you stop? You spend too much money. But football doesn't work like that. Yes, football does flourish under money and this is why teams like Manchester City, Chelsea have been among the top teams in the world in recent decades, but definitely the Todd Boyle way of spending money is not the way to do it. So how should they have proceeded and how to fix this? I think the first thing Chelsea should have done and should do in the near future is sign a mix of players with experience and players with huge potential. The second part is what they are already doing since the American takeover, but Chelsea should also buy players like Madison, Wordprouse, Mitrovic, Mares, Cancelo, etc. who are all available this season. I didn't know that. These are all proven quality players who add so much character and creation to the team. The next question is who will score goals for Chelsea? That 
is a great question. Unfortunately, their biggest answer to that question, Christopher Nkunku is injured for almost the rest of this year. Chelsea scored an alarming number of only 38 goals last season and they don't look any better this time on that exact front. None of the players Chelsea have in their front, Murphy, Jackson, Connor, Kearney, Starling, Madueke have enough PL goals in their legs. No, uh, coach, they're just kids. Manchester City played the 2021-22 campaign with mostly one proven forward who was also injured for a long time. Arsenal last season also had to play with mostly very inexperienced Enketia at the front as Gabriel Jesus was injured for a significant time. But both of these teams managed to do well as they got so many goals from their wingers and attacking mates. Martinelli, Saka, Oregar, De Bruyne, Mahrez, Gundogan, Bernardo Silva all score important goals very often for Arsenal and City. Liverpool also had so many different scorers in the form of Salah, Mane, Zora, Luis Diaz, Firmino in previous seasons. But who are these scorers for Chelsea? All of their attacking players are basically kids who have really good speed and can dribble to some extent. That's it. Again, for the hundredth time, yes, they have really good potential, but at this moment, they lack in so many different things. You have a lot to learn, my friend. <laughs> Fast touch, decision making, finishing, shot accuracy, build up play, physicality and above all, experience. Now every time Chelsea loses a match, it seems they are buying a new player and they are actually in search of an attacking mid or center forward right now. I really really hope if they actually buy someone in those two positions, which they really need to do, they buy someone with at least 3 seasons of actual league playing experience, not against someone who is just super fast and shows glimpse of what they can be in future. I think the main reason Chelsea have never owned the Premier League after the 2016-17 season is because they could not replace Cesc Fabregas, Eden Hazard and Diego Costa ever. A midfielder whose vision and passing range is unparalleled, a winger who can easily occupy 2-3 defenders and dribble past and cut into the box, and a lethal finisher, this combo is a recipe to success for most successful teams in the world. But since Mata and Cesc left, Chelsea never had a player whose vision, through balls, crosses, everything is good, who can play the Bruno KDB Modric role in Chelsea. They need to find someone there as soon as possible. Because time is running out. And I would also go for a striker with the profile of Mitrovic, Wolbeck, Wilson, etc., who are not huge in world football but have enough experience to chip in some important goals when needed. Also, all these players being so young, they lack hugely in physicality. Chelsea used to be one of the most physically dominant forces of world football with the likes of Trogba, Balak, Essien, Alex, Ivanovic, etc. But this team is the exact opposite of that and if their defending doesn't become pinpoint, I can see them suffer with physical sides, especially in set pieces. They need to figure this out too soon. This is a problem while attacking too, as their chance of scoring from corners and indirect free kicks is also very slim. They currently don't have anyone who is really good at taking direct free kicks and penalties also. And one of the most important things they need to figure out is their goalkeeper. They lost both of Mendy and Kepa this season and honestly, I don't rate either of them very highly. But Sanchez is a step down from that, not up in any sense. I'm sure. I've made some, some bad life decisions. In this department, I really wanted someone with experience but Boheli again has done what he does every day. But MLS goalkeeper Zorde Petrov is out of nowhere. Are you kidding me? Let's see how this plays out. In the last few seasons, Chelsea had always played incredible football and looked like a frightening force when Rhys James and Ben Chilwell played together. These two players are an incredible rare blend of attacking players and defensive sense, but unfortunately they are way too injury prone. If I am not incorrect, they have only played together 6 times last season and just after one game, James is injured again. Chelsea need to build a playing system where they own demand or rely on the inhuman service James and Chilwell provides. What more do you want? <laughs> they need to create from their center midfield and wing position more often than wing back positions so that when players substitute James and Chilwell, even if they are not as good as them, it doesn't become a huge issue. 
Chelsea fans need to understand that Chelsea right now is still a work in progress. The inspiring thing about this team is so far their exciting gameplay. From the preseason and from the first couple of matches, they look like a team who really wants to play positive football. They are not just keeping the ball in possession for the sake of it, but playing a lot of forward passes, making a lot of forward and in-between runs. I do think if they get a proper central attacking midfielder and a finisher with time, this team will do well. It will be very tough for them to finish in the top 4 this time as the race is now between Manchester City, Arsenal, Liverpool, Manchester United, Spurs, Chelsea, Brighton, Newcastle and Aston Villa. So 9 teams will be competing for only 4 slots. But teams like Brighton, Newcastle and Aston Villa who are playing European football after such a long time or for the first time might struggle when the schedule becomes jam-packed. And Thursday night football might affect Liverpool's performance too. Chelsea doesn't have any of those so I still won't write them off from a top 4 finish. Let's see how it goes for the Blues. That's it for today. Thanks for watching this video. Let us know your thoughts about Chelsea and their transfer and performance in this season. If you like content like this, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, tada!